Hey, this is Kotlin Conversations, where we're having conversations with just some of the amazing guests and speakers and other and, and folks working at Kotlin Conf 2024. I'm Huynh Duet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Oleg Nunashev. And Ksenia Schneevis. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you both for joining me. Um, can you tell a little bit about audience about yourself? Like, Oleg, we'll start with you. Like, what do you do? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, in Kotlin Foundation, I'm a Google Summer of Code Orc Admin. I'm happy mm -hmm. to organize Google Summer of Code. It's uh, one of the most popular open source internship programs uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. It has uh, more than 20,000 uh, of students who participated there over the more than 15 years. Mm -hmm. So it's huge and it's actually quite a good opportunity for foundations uh, and for open source projects to participate. Mm -hmm. In my case, I'm rather a serial uh, Google Summer of Code Org Admin. Mm -hmm. I started in 2016 in Jenkins. Wow. Uh, then it was a free and open source Silicon Foundation, Continuous Delivery Foundation, Captain, mm -hmm. and I also consulted a, few, consulted a few other organizations. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It has been a long time, long time, and now I'm happy to join the Kotlin Foundation to help yeah. with Gradle projects. Okay. And Ksenia, what do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks, Alec, for joining us. Uh, I am the second year org admin for the Google Summer of Code program. Mm -hmm. So last year was the first time Kotlin Foundation has ever participated in uh, GSOC, and we were really happy. We had four successfully completed projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we're taking part this year again with five more projects that's just recently uh, been accepted to the program. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll start coding soon. And so GSOC, you said, has been running for like 16, like over 16 years. You've yes. been working with it, with GSOC for 16 years, but it's been like almost 20 years now that... that mm, yeah, pretty much. So uh, generally, what's the, what's the goal of GSOC? Uh, so there are multiple goals. Yeah. Uh, many people think that the main goal is to work on something, deliver a new project, a lot of code, new library, mm -hmm. and it's not true. Uh, the key goal is actually learning, and it's learning not just uh, for uh, GSOC contributors or students, uh, so there were some ch terminology changes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also learning for mentors, uh, so yeah. projects embark on uh, various uh, interesting areas in their communities sometimes. Well, all of us have a lot of pet projects we would like to work on, Absolutely. and the Google Summer of Code is a good opportunity for that. Mm -hmm. So you want to explore something which is not some, uh, it, it's in your backlog, it's interesting, you have no time, mm -hmm. but you can probably mentor, advice on community, and this is how a project will start. Mm -hmm. And then you learn together. Uh, yeah, yeah, often yeah. you learn quite a lot of things, and the project can change, etc. And uh, for me, it's the main value, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, there is quite a lot of collaboration, community bonding, uh, also people just uh, learn to do some technical leadership, communication mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. and a lot of outcomes that are useful for community. If there is some code that is shipped, it's perfect, but yeah, it's not, it doesn't always happen. No, that's great. That's not, it's, it's about the process learning together. So, yeah. so how long have you been a mentor? Since 2016. 2016, okay. Yeah. So, and, and generally, like what, what uh, how many products are you mentoring like each year? It depends, but usually it's one or two. One or two? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can be a community advisor, or you can mentor mentors. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they think that uh, often we try to engage with more people, because mm -hmm. for me, one of the values is actually uh, growing community leaders. Yeah. I have a presentation at Community of a Code uh, in Bratislava, mm -hmm. and it's exactly about leveraging open source programs uh, to grow your community backbone, mm -hmm. having more community leaders who will help you to expand. Mm -hmm. And basically, helping uh, such aspiring uh, community leaders for me is uh, as interesting as mentoring students, mm -hmm. which is definitely interesting yeah, yeah. too. How many? Um, how, how much? Like, how do you? I mm -hmm. guess how much time do you spend with the mentees during the course of like GSOC? Like, mm -hmm. is it like weekly? And then like you sit down and like pair a program? Like, mm -hmm. how does it work? How does it work in Kotlin? Uh, so we usually uh, say that it's about five to seven hours a week that okay. a mentor should spend together working together with uh, their mentees. And I think each uh, pair, they choose their own uh, cadence. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe sometimes they communicate asynchronously mm -hmm. in chats, but we recommend that they have uh, some office hours maybe when they can have uh, a call mm -hmm. and yeah just discuss. Uh... And so actually, in the, in the terms of the project selection process, so it's not like you just apply and you're in, you have to kind of propose a project, that's right? So uh, um, what we do, for, for at least for the Cullen Foundation, uh, we just 
had an internal call for projects inside the companies that are in the foundation. So mm -hmm. JetBrains did this uh, for, for our projects, Google did this, and Gradle uh, did this as well this year. So we gathered some projects, we gathered some potential mentors, and then we published this list and the potential contributors could uh, select. Mm -hmm. And then we could select from the potential contributions, and that was like the second mm -hmm. uh, step, and after that, Google approved uh, the final list. Okay, yeah. great. And yeah. so uh, how long does the program run until? Uh, it depends on this year beca yeah. uh, because there are multiple uh, scopes. It can be a short program, uh, just two months. It may mm -hmm. be three months, the mm -hmm. whole summer, which was common format. Mm -hmm. And there are also longer term projects, but uh, they're rather exceptional. Mm -hmm. And for us, actually, the program starts usually in uh, January or February, because as Ksenia said, we start from collecting project ideas. Mm -hmm. And even at this fa phase, uh, there are already people who reach out, who mm -hmm. look uh, for potential projects. Uh, general recommendation for students is to actually start uh, contacting uh, the mentoring organizations earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's important because uh, what we publish is project ideas. It's mm -hmm. not final projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically candidates, so they're expected to build a proposal. This proposal can be based on this project idea or it might be completely original. Mm -hmm. And what we really appreciate when uh, somebody makes a proposal uh, that definitely is either something uh, different but within the same scope yeah. or they propose something better from their opinion. Because we had quite a lot of examples, for example, for pluggable storage in Jenkins, yeah. when uh, mm -hmm. a contributor uh, would come and say that, uh, in this case, I think that uh, you proposed uh, PostgreSQL for the storage. I think that for that, Kafka would be better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, Kafka with radius for storage, etc. So this is how I suggest to do that. Mm -hmm. And then mentors review, think about it, say, uh, we have no idea how it works. Uh, but it's interesting, we learn something, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And this is a type of uh, uh, projects that is actually quite helpful for the community. I like that mm -hmm. a lot because, again, as you said, the focus is on learning, so it's not yes. about building like the best project, but it's all about learning mm -hmm. and, and introducing people to open source, right, as, a, as mm -hmm. a way of like empowering people, I guess, to be able to contribute to the, mm -hmm. the greater open source community. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any, like, I guess, I know you don't want to pick a favorite, but is there anything like that you really value or learned or one of your favorite experiences from being a mentor for so long? What, mm -hmm. what, what keeps you going as a, as a, as a GSOC mentor? Oh, yeah. So for me, it's definitely outreach. Yeah. One of uh, my highlights, I think it was 2018 or 2017, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even a student from our organization because uh, there are many other projects working on Jenkins. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was a student who was uh, developing Jenkins pipelines and pipeline library. We invited him to present in our community. We had uh, monthly webinars, doing demos, etc. Mm -hmm. with a lot of contributors. And basically it was final demo. Uh, well, uh, he already passed uh, all the evaluation, etc. So it wasn't a concern. And uh, <laughs> basically um, uh, he comes to the call, etc. and it says, uh, Sorry, it's uh, flooding in our village, uh, oh, no. but uh, still I want to do the demo before <laughs> I have oh. to, to evacuate, if I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry if I mess up the story a bit, but uh, yeah, it was basically uh, the gist. And f he finally did the presentation. Yes, so the network was probably not that great, etc. But then uh, he left and we met maybe three years later at one of the conferences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to just discuss the story, etc. Oh, that's uh, amazing. He was just so passionate and so like, yeah. just like uh, excited about presenting that he just decided yeah. to do it no matter what. <laughs> but GSOC is a great experience because yeah. it allows you to connect. And most of Google Summer of Code uh, contributors, uh, they come uh, uh, fr either from uh, Asian countries or from Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is no restriction. You can apply from everywhere. But it's also an opportunity uh, to actually connect uh, with uh, people who wouldn't be otherwise able to participate in a program to do real mentorship, mm -hmm. uh, internship in a tech company because, mm -hmm. well, internships are rarely done remote. Well, mm -hmm. there's a few exceptions. Well, but... after COVID, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, this actually provides a lot of great opportunities. It, it sounds amazing and people are really excited yeah. about it. Ksenia, what are your favorite parts that have been about doing the program um, last couple? Past so, years. yeah, I think that's that's amazing how how people from inside of uh, our company could uh, think that 
think about this as a way to grow themselves to yeah. to have some someone to mentor i second what alex said about this um i like i like uh the vibe i like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how it uh how the uh, i don't know how it all happens like from from the very start when the person gets introduced to the community till the final project that we publish as something not maybe always production ready but some big step towards finishing the project that the team otherwise couldn't have uh, finished that quickly for example yeah and i mean connections are so important and then that mm -hmm. that's such a valuable thing that you give them both the experience but also connection to people like yourselves mm -hmm. who are in the community and in like the 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 space and then then as you said like three years later you had a student come and, and kind of like uh, reminisce mm -hmm. with you about the great experience so yeah and uh, also then even after Google Summer of Code is over, you still can stay connected. So many students come again, participate as mentors uh, later, or they start their professional careers sometimes mm -hmm. uh, by using the knowledge they got. And uh, there are uh, various evolutions. So for example, uh, there is, uh, I uh, was mentoring Nancy Shohan uh, uh, in 2017 in a free and open source Silicon Foundation. Mm -hmm. She was actually doing uh, some automation and containerization for EDA tools. Oh, wow. But okay. what happened next? She started contributing more and more towards Golang ecosystem. Uh, uh, she joined a company in India to work on uh, Golang projects. Then she started contributing to CNCF and finally changed her career also to advocacy. So now oh, she's amazing. a developer advocate uh, uh, at LocalStack. Wow. Uh, so okay. uh, five years passed a bit nice. more and uh, yeah, we stay in touch. We met on a bunch of conferences. Last time, I believe, just at KubeCon. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, for many students, career evolves like that. Uh, we stay in touch. This year in Jenkins, we have uh, four, three or four st former students who are mentors. So yeah, yeah this is a nice so they, continuation. So they come back and they can keep, keep continuing mm. the company or the, the community. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, what can you say? Like, I, I know like it sounds wonderful. It sounds like such a all giving community and connection, but I imagine maybe there's some students out there who might be a little intimidated, might be a little scared because, you know, like I looked at some of the project myself and I was like, oh, wow, I wouldn't know how to do this. Um, what can you say, either of you, to encourage like students to join? Like, like what, like, mm -hmm. what, how can you, like, I don't know, it was just how can you, like, maybe quell any in, uh, feelings of intimidation they may have? What would, what would you like to say? Yeah, just like, yeah, I. I mean, I think uh, that it's definitely worth trying. We're getting mm -hmm. um, about 60 submissions each year. So I think we can do much better. I mean, uh, the Coven Foundation is just in the second year taking part in GSOC. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we definitely uh, can have more competition and select more projects eventually. Because we had, for example, I think about nine projects that we uh, could have mentored. And in the end, we got five selected mm -hmm. so there is still room and yeah that's yeah. my encouragement <laughs> and also it's not only call for students but also call for mentors mm -hmm. because a great google summer of code project is also when you have multiple mentors i really advise to have at least three uh, or two minimum mm -hmm. and it's always nice when mentors come from different companies etc because it's a good collaborative project. So for yeah. example, in Gradle, we have uh, uh, two projects uh, together with Microsoft. Uh, we also work with JetBrains folks uh, and uh, another project, uh, it will be with, together with the Czech style community. Yeah. So there is quite a lot of opportunities for such cross collaboration. Yeah. And this is actually what uh, the Kotlin Foundation. Inside the foundation, so. yes. So that's also beneficial yeah. for uh, the Kotlin Foundation, another mm -hmm. way. To, to collaborate, yeah. So yeah, basically growing the network and participation uh, helps mm -hmm. everyone. And, yes. and a funny, uh, a funny mm -hmm. fact uh, yeah. that we have a mm -hmm. last year's GSOC participant now here who has joined Sentry, one of the CodenConf partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and he just participated in GSOC last year. Mm -hmm. so, That's amazing. So yeah. it, I, it just sounds like an amazing program for all mm -hmm. kinds of reasons: professional, mm -hmm. personal, uh, your own personal skills and growth. And as you said, like not just participants, but also mentors. So if this sounds like something like maybe even if you're an established engineer and have a career, you can probably learn and form many more connections and, and also help like the next, you know, the, the upcoming uh you know, engineers and, and other folks in the community. So yeah, this sounds like something that you'd be interested in. I think it, I mean, 
It sounds amazing. So uh, where can people go to find more information about GSOC and maybe how to be either as a student or as a mentor? Uh, so I think the main uh, channel for us is our Kotlin Lang Slack. And there is a, an open a public GSOC channel that they can join. They can also just look up uh, something on in the Kotlin documentation. Just Google uh, and yeah, it will come up. Definitely. There is also a page on the Kotlin Foundation website with the main links. Uh, uh, it's not, it's on the Kotlin link. <laughs> oh, Kotlin no. link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We will uh, probably fix it. But yeah, yeah, if you just Google for that, you can find quite a lot of resources. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Gradle, we also have uh, a page which lists our uh, projects. We have Gradle projects in the Kotlin Foundation and one in the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and basically, you can uh, join, uh, you can find this page and there will be links uh, to the Kotlin Foundation resources too. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you both so much for joining us and like like sharing your passion and like uh, and all the inf great information about GSOC. Um, and thank you all for joining us again. If this is at all interesting to you or something that you think would, yeah, you know, if you're interested in open source, if you're interested in mentoring, uh, yeah, definitely please go uh, look out for GSOC. Go check out the Con Kotlin Foundation information. And yeah, thank you so much, Oleg. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah, and thanks yeah. a lot to, to Ksenia for running this in the Kotlin Foundation and to, for starting it because it's really important for education and yeah yeah, yeah it's uh, an important thanks. job so yeah extra extra thank you to Ksenia thank you to yeah. Oleg. and uh yeah again uh please check it out and thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time mm -hmm. bye, bye.